I had one messy coder back again, and this time with another live dev interview with Forced, aka Lars, the man behind the custom tree importer, Lux, Advanced Domain Grass, Advanced Folly Shader, so much more. He's also one of the guys who makes the forest look so beautiful. And this was on my Twitch stream or the w.twitch.tv slash the Macy Coda, and we played about with Forced's kits. We also talked about the forest how the forest looks so great and if you want your games to look as good as the forest well sit back find out how in this video and i'll see you all in a second now before i've got a list of questions that you know we normally ask people uh, if you were a fruit what fruit would you be What's your favourite uh, pastime? You know what it's like. I'm, I'm afraid to say that most of my questions tonight are going to be, well, the start of them at least, are going to be about the forest. I'm, I'm a bit obsessive. You know that by now. So uh, I do apologise in advance. For, for Maybe I might fanboy out a little bit in this stream. Let's click call. Do, 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 do. Let me, let me know if you guys can hear it. Oh my word, that's a loud ring. Hi there. Hello. Good Abend. Good Abend. How you doing? Oh, uh, well, I feel a little bit sick, but uh, okay. Oh, I hope, I hope that's not because of me. No, no. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I have had that effect before, though. I have had people come on stream, talk to me for a little while, and then run off and vomit all over the it place. Got sick. Okay. So uh, you won't be the first. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Can everyone hear him? Okay. We do got to do the old start of the start of the stream, start of the interview, where we spend twenty minutes trying to adjust the levels of the audio and asking if anyone can actually hear him. So can anyone hear Lars? Can you hear Lars? Everyone say good Abend if you can hear Lars. Good Abend. So Goku says, hello, hello, Forst. Smiley face, smiley face. Guten Abend, says Gilda. Ah. Oh, seems, okay. to, seems to work somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of Guten Abends in chat. We've got a lovely collection of um, people in the community from all around the world. From all around the world. Um, so we've probably got a lot of people who can speak German. So we could do this entire stream in German. The only problem is that I can only I can only say "Du hast schöne Augen und Lippen," and that's it. Oh. And ich liebe dich. Mm. As you can tell, my German was used for a particular reason. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> so, um, guys, this is let me let me start now with a nice introduction. Everyone in stream. Please welcome Unity Legend, um, old school asset king, that is Lars, aka Forced, creator of the Advanced Foliage Shader, the Advanced Terrain Grass, the Custom Tree Importer, um, Lux Pro Thingy Magic that you need to tell me more about, and a load of trees and other stuff. And so much more things. All you need to do to find his assets is do an exclamation mark Forced in chat. And there's a lovely link to the asset store where you can see the, the huge amounts of assets this man has created over the years. Welcome, Lars. Thank you. Here we go. 2011 you started. Um, actually, I do not really remember, but it sounds reasonable. Well, that's what it says on your bio on the asset store. So, I've okay. just, so <laughs> according to you... You started back in 2011 on the Asset Store, which sounds about right, being that you're number 408. Yeah, might be the reason, I think. I remember I started with Unity 1 point something. Oh, no. 1 point something, my word. And then, yeah, got a little bit deeper uh, with each new version coming out. That was back in the day when it was only available on the Mac, the editor, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, um, I remember where Unity, 
was like mainly thought of as this engine to allow you to embed um, 3D players into a browser. Yeah. Was, was that the only way you could use Unity or could you compile it and run it as a standalone as well back in them days? Uh, back in those days, well, no, you could always uh, create a uh, standalone player. Not uh, not only the uh, web thing. I only knew about it because I was doing some web stuff at the time. The only reason I knew about Unity is that I needed some kind of solution to stick it in the browser. And um, Garage Games had their version that they were coming out with. To, to their browser player, their web player. And then there was this beautiful thing called Unity. But like I say, you had to use a dirty Mac if you wanted to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Still have shivers about that. I still have to cleanse myself in the shower every time I think about using a Mac. So what actually got you started with Unity? Why I started or how I started? Yeah, give me a both. How well, you how you got started and and, and what well, drew you to? I read about it uh, because it was uh, it won a prize at the uh, Apple uh, Developer Conference. So I realized that there was a 3D game engine or a 3D engine for for Mac, and I just tried it out and played around a little bit with it, and then I quit it for about a year and. Then I came back and uh, uh, yeah, just spent some spare time there. And of course, I, I saw at that time what uh, other engines were capable of, and Unity wasn't. So I tried to work a little bit harder to to get visuals out of that engine, with which which would be a little bit more competitive, but uh, unfortunately that wasn't possible at all at those days. If you think of Cry and what was able to do, uh, what you were able to do with CryEngine, for example. Well, I think we're but always playing catch up, aren't we? Let me, let me share my screen with you while we're, while we're talking, because I just forgot I need to do share screen so you can actually see what's going on on my computer. The thing is, you can't, um, hang on, there we go, share screen, that's better. So you're basically the reason why you started making stuff was because you just wanted Unity to be better than, than what you could get out of it, out of the box. You could turn it like this, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice way, nice way of putting it, although no, I think it's, I think it's accurate to say that, you know, that's, a lot the strengths of unity is that it's easy it's customizable and it allows people to expand upon it the downside of unity is that it really needs people to customize it and expand upon yeah. it <laughs> that's the whole point i guess <clears throat> it's the clever business model that these guys came up with so they didn't have to spend so much money maybe making this this engine <laughs> So you've got um you've got a lot I didn't realize how many trees that you have on the asset store. So are you I mean by profession are you an artist? I'm a graphic designer. Oh, that's my profession. That's that's fancier than saying artist, that, isn't it? Uh, depends on you, I guess. <laughs> I don't think it's fancier. Actually, that's my absolutely first package, so please don't show me this. <laughs> no, you need to go from the start. You need to go, you need to go from your roots, uh, being a tree and everything. Show your roots. When was this actually released? Um, May the 2nd, 2011. Wow. Wow. Show it! See, Sanya says, show it. Um, you got five stars. Five out of five, eight user ratings. This package contains a set of nine fully edible European beech trees covering a wide range of different sizes and shapes. Um, so your first ever asset was a tree. Yeah. 
What did you use to create this 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 tree back in two thousand and eleven? Oh, it's made with the tree creator, which uh, which just came out. So that's the first try to to work with it. Oh, here you go. It tells you right here in the thing. Using Unity's tree creator, I really should learn to read. As I was playing about with um, the <laughs> advanced train grass. I was trying to set up, you know, the demo scene to to show you guys in this in this interview, and I was playing about, and Force rightly pointed out I hadn't actually read the readme yet before I just delved straight into the uh, to the demo scene. I'm not I'm not going to say I'm, I'm great at reading readmes and instructions. So this was this your second tree? Are these by February two twenty um, fourth two thousand and twelve? Horse no. chestnut tree. It's a later one, and I think the birch trees were the second package. These are these are actually still good. I mean, I'm shocked. Well, and do you see those little details like the mushroom? Yeah, that's that's yeah. what shocked me. <laughs> this is 2012, and you've and you've got a detail on your tree. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Fresh meat says that your Scots pines are on his wish list forever. They're on his wish list. He hasn't bought them yet. We need to, uh, we need to sell him. Come on, let's sell him on those trees. So, which where are they? Um, where are they? The mountain pines or the Scots? Here pine. we go. Scots oh. pine trees. So, when did you first wheel these out? These are August two thousand eleven. So, these are some of your original ones. This is two thousand eleven. It doesn't look like it's two thousand eleven. Ah, you updated it in two thousand sixteen. So what are your up when you update these, are you changing the, the textures? What do you do? No, actually not. Um for for those trees I wrote a custom shader which allows you to, to have that uh typically pine tree look of the of the bark texture. Where there is the the rough bark at the bottom and then this reddish something where the bark went off thing at the top and uh, yeah it's it's qu quite difficult to, to create something like that with the tree creators so in just a single texture a single tiling texture so I wrote a custom shader for that um, which I did with Unity 3 at that time and uh, of course it broke uh, Unity 5 and I never thought that anybody would buy this using <laughs> Unity 5 but there were several complaints and so I decided to uh, to update the shader. So, so it, You're shocked that people are buying your stuff today? Uh, a little bit, yes. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't be because the, surpri surprisingly, it looks good for something yeah. that's uh, that's old. I can't tell. I couldn't actually tell the difference between this and something that was made more recently. I do love, I do love your little, um, yeah, your little pines on here, but um, there's a man stuck in your tree for some reason. Yeah, I think uh, at that time I wanted to show that. Uh, <clears throat> The size of the details and the textures actually fit the uh, the real world size because uh, at that time and even nowadays you find a lot of trees uh, with leaves which are uh, something like fifty centimeters or or, or so <laughs> just to uh, in order to get the leaf have a lush look. They just increase the uh, the texture they have, and uh, well, at that time, this was my way to show. No, it looks a little bit more realistically. And I, I thought it was a way to show that you can have people climb your tree. Uh, it might be misleading, yeah. <laughs> but, but I didn't get any complaint about. Hey, wow, your trees are not climbable. <laughs> Oh, I want I, my money back. <laughs> I should, I should do a review. This tree, this is a scam. I can't climb the tree. Where's the tree climb script? This did not come with a free script to climb the trees. Mm. I want a refund. Um, all right, they put the link in chat. 
for the uh, for that spruce um, the Scots pine so fresh meat can finally part with his money and pick it up. So as people know that I've been wanting to improve the crappy trees that I got with speed tree for the uh oh, no everyone everyone loves speed tree but I have like one bad experience with the speed tree cactus and um with trees that I then I just want I want my own trees and everyone tells me oh, if you want something that's special you need to make it yourself you need to get you get yourself a 3d artist to model yourself some trees and then everyone says the same thing then you need to get yourself the custom tree importer and i had no idea this was yours until the other day so um the custom tree importer let's click on the play on that little video you've got so what before I just ask you a load of random questions about Unity, I just what yeah. prompted you to to make this beautiful kit to allow us to import custom trees into Unity? Well, why did you why did you make it? It's just a pain working with a tree creator. <laughs> That's a good answer. I yeah. Like at least for me, uh, I know that there are some people out there who are, who can do amazing trees with it. Uh, but for me, it always turned out to, well, hand place any single uh, any single leaf plane into our uh, to move all and manually shape all branches. Um, and there were so many little bugs you would get little gaps between the trunk and the branch. Oh, I hate that so much. Oh, I hate those little gaps. And, uh, yeah, for this reason, I thought for a long time, well, if I do all the work manually in the tree creator uh, with its limits, it, it's sudden bugs that show show off. Why why can't I not simply use a, a regular three D application to model the trees and uh, import them to Unity? And so, uh, after having thinking about it for quite a while, I simply started one day to uh, to to write the script. That's needed. Yeah, try this with a speed tree. <laughs> Well, that's quite an old uh, example. I'm no. sitting here. I'm sitting here muted. Apparently, I forgot to unmute myself. So I'm sitting. You and I are talking, and nobody else can hear me. But it happens all the time. It happens. It happens most most of the stream, I'm sitting here muted, and nobody can hear a word I'm saying. So I think everyone's used to it by now. Um, yeah, yeah, I was just saying that this is to, to everyone who who couldn't hear a word I was saying, is that this is in the run. This is live now. You know, well, not obviously not live, but this is one time. It's changing the direction of the wind on this tree. Yeah. I mean, oh, we're going to play with that in a second in Unity. So how hard is it to use the custom tree? How much of an expert do you need to be to use the custom tree in Portland? Well, you should be a modeler. You should be familiar with our organizing your Ge geometry in the uh, in the in the tree in the hierarchy of your uh, software. Um, you should be familiar with uh, UV unwrapping and yeah, um, modeling structures like tubes or things like that. And uh, then I guess you're fine to go. That's tessellation. This is. Hang on. Let me just re let me just replay this video. Because I was just about to start swearing. Yeah, let's say 
the trees look ugly, but they are just placeholders. The, uh, the birch tree, for example, shows dual texturing uh, for the trunk. It uses a, uh, a different texture on the lower part uh, compared to the upper part, but it's the same material. So it's just one draw call for the bark and all branches. And this is uh, uh, the tessellation feature, Bloody hell. which is included in the latest version. Oh, Cref man, you've got good wood. Crack free tessellation. Uh, other than the tessellation are used in the uh, Book of the Dead. Thing. And that's also tessellation. And now you can see how it fades out. Oh, man. But you, oh. oh, Antonio's in chat. Earth shaping. As a man who knows a thing or two about shaders and making things look beautiful, welcome, Antonio. Somebody give me an exclamation mark. Uh, cascade, I think. I don't know if I've if I've done the shout out for Antonio yet. I probably have. Um, wow, man, this looks. But you need to be. You need to have a basic understanding of modeling. Or, or have somebody in your team, obviously, who does. Yeah. Damn, this looks beautiful. This really does look beautiful, I have to say. I like. I normally like um, when people come on and I interview them and I find things wrong with their stuff. And I take the piss out of them and, you know, take the mickey. Um, I need to find something so I can take the mickey out of because this everything so far has it's just got me a massive smile on my face. And I'm a bit giddy like a schoolboy. Um, I've, I have an obsession with good wood and textures. I need, I, it's people like, you know, they know by now that I, I love good wood. And um, yeah, this has got, this is that test, that, oh, that tessellation. Oh my word. Oh, if I buy AFS, does it give me a grass shader for vegetation studio? Oh, good question. There's a twisted storm for Lars. So uh, if you buy advanced foliage shader, does it give you a grass shader for vegetation studio? Um, no, not really. Um, you would have to tweak it um, according to the uh, instructions given by the vegetation studio. It's just a small include file. But uh, in case you're looking for a really nice grass shader, I would point you to uh, ATG. Uh, the advanced terrain grass, which is compatible with, with uh, vegetation studio right out of the box uh, and gives you nicer bending and uh, nicer lighting. So that's a good question that you've just jumped into. Is um, you've got advanced terrain grass and you've got advanced foliage shaders. I'm just loading up uh, Unity. Here we go. Popped into Unity now. Everyone can see my Unity screen and which scene am I loaded up? I've let's load up a demo. So you've got I've got two projects installed: Advanced Terrain Grass and Advanced Foliage Shader. Advanced Foliage Shader is your um, call it original foliage package. Yeah, good way it's of calling the it. Initial one. <clears throat> Um, version four is still available, isn't it, on the store? Yeah. What's still... the difference between four and five? I mean, why is four not deprecated? And there's so you've got version it's... four and version yeah. five. Yeah. From time to time, there's someone asking for a version for Unity four, and uh, so I did not remove it. Nice. Yes. See, that's that's nice when people. Because a lot of people just go around deprecating stuff. Yeah. Just so they don't have to support it anymore. And I just have the assets for uh, make the backup for me. So. Um, <laughs> ATG. Bad. Here we go. I've got a question. So Twister Storm. But with ATG, would it be 3D grass or billboard? <clears throat> well, that's... That depends on how you define 3D grass or billboard. It doesn't support um, real billboarding, so you, you won't get uh, your textures, your grass textures always facing the camera. 
it, uh, it uses, if you just put in a simple texture, it will use a, a quad, uh, a basic quad, and render the grass uh, using that quad, which gets rotated uh, in space um, randomly and uh, follows the, the, the shape of the terrain. But you can also uh, use very complex grass models with it. Actually, I would recommend to, to uh, use a bit more complex grass uh, meshes than just a uh, single quad because um, this would allow you to draw less instances but get the same visual result more or less. So uh, it will help you to uh, gain performance. Right, we're, in, we're in now the cast demo scene from Advanced Violet Shaders. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the standard asset character because I do love him. FPS controller. Here he is, call him Kevin. Now before I get started, um, do I need, I haven't read the README and I always don't read the README. <laughs> so um, what's the first thing you do when you install Advanced Violet Shader? To get started, read the read me or the docs. Here we go. Or I have a look at the demo scenes. So open edit project settings, player other settings, set color space to linear. Okay. Did I do that? I'm not sure if I did that. Gamma! Sorry. My bad. My bad. I have this on my wish list, so sell me. He has this on his wish list, Lars. You need to sell him. <laughs> sell it to him. Yeah, buy it. <laughs> there you go. Buy it now. Do it. What are you waiting for? Buy it. Yes. All right. So that's the uh, that's the first thing I needed to do. You also have to assign the AFS deferred lighting shaders. Otherwise, all foliage will just show up pretty colorful. Open edit. Project settings, graphics. Hang on. Edit. Project settings. Graphics. Oh, where's my thing, we Oh, hang on. Let me put. Let me put uh, another tab here so I can carry on reading things. Inspector. Here we go. Uh, lock you. Here. And now we'll go back to graphics. Here we go. So, under built-in shaders, change deferred to custom shader, then assign AFS internal deferred shading shader located in shaders resources. Okay, so I was already playing about with this earlier for the ATG one, so we'll change this here. So I go to deferred, and you need to choose from built-in shaders. So if I go put this back to how it was. This is what it was out of the box. And you go mm -hmm. here and you change. Oh, hang on a minute. Everyone remembers the fact that they can't actually see me selecting. So Lars and I can see when I click on something, I get a drop down. And everyone else just magically sees that it changes from being built in shader to custom shader. Uh, most of you know by now that when you click on a select menu in Unity, you will see some options. So there you go. Um, all right, so custom shader. And now I need to choose from this little circle thing the AFS internal deferred shading. Okay. So, again, nobody can see this. Well, can I dock this? No, I can't dock it. So, I need to find AFS underscore internal deferred shading. That goes in the top one. Yeah? Yeah. Lovely. And then, uh, what's next? Also shade deferred reflections. Oh, okay. Deferred reflections, custom shader. Again, find that AFS underscore internal dash deferred reflections. Okay. As some grass models rely on import scripts, which are part of this package, they won't be processed correctly when you just import this package. This will lead to some grass models floating around. Oh dear. In order to solve this problem, simply re-import the folder demos, quit Unity, restart again. All right. Do I need to do that? 
I, I don't think so. I don't think I haven't either. seen any wrong behavior uh, right now. Okay, let's uh, go un unlock you. And I don't need this old silly camera anymore because now I have Kevin. Hello, Kevin. And more importantly, let's turn Kevin's feet down and turn off head bob because we don't want everyone to get sick with Kevin bobbing about. All right, so this is advanced foliage shader. Let's go and stick on, whoops, make it big. That's what she said. So click play and when I go look up to stuff you'll see that it doesn't actually do anything that's because we need to add something to make the magic happen oh these are pretty oh look someone's been eating these leaves a little smile wow that's a I like that little touch that is cute there's a cute little touch. All right, so to get to make this a little bit more funkier, we need to add a script on here. So we type in uh, touch bending. No, it won't work. The plants are not set up to support touch bending. Oh man, this one's not set up to support touch bending. Oh, okay, no. we'll add it up to the touch bending demo. But anyway, it would. Oh, hang on, let's go straight this, to the touch this, bending this demo. demo just gives you a brief overlook of which kind of plants you can expect to 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 look well with um, AFS. So ah, the, there you go. three created trees and then custom made bushes or little ferns, grass, or uh, up to something like a small banana tree. <laughs> small banana tree. Oh, that's a nice texture there. They don't bend. I want them to bend. Let's go into the touch bending demo. That um, they bend. They just there is a little animation and they bend slowly. Oh, look at that! There you go. And then they bend gently and then a little bit stronger. <laughs> so you can see that it reacts to 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 the input from the wind zone. Oh, what the hell's going on? I can't climb up this tree. Refund. Refund. Refund, I can't climb up the tree. All right, I want to play with touch bending, which is the reason why I purchased AFS 100 years ago. So this was, again, one of the first assets I ever purchased, AFS 4. One star, one star for no tree climbing. Um, and let's load up touch bending. Do I want to save this scene? No, don't save this scene, because I just put Kevin in there. Let's... God, where are you? Here they are. And I'm going to add Kevin. Okay. Now I can add Kevin. And Kevin won't... Everyone else is bending things. Oh, you just smacked me in the face. Look at, look at these naughty NPCs bending stuff. Look at that. I want to have some of that action. Oh, we've got a head bob turned on still. So, as you'll see, it doesn't actually do anything. I thought that this would be like so much code required to do this. I thought this was going to be like having to use my brain. I was so shocked when... Okay, so let's, now we'll go typing touch, find a um, touch bending folder. And you've got here inside the advanced foliage sheet, there's five scripts folder, there's a touch bending folder, and there is this touch bending player listener. And I'll just drag him onto the FPS controller. And now I'll click play. Oh, get out of the way. Oh, right in the last second. Now, oh, look at me. Look at me. Oh, my word, I'm back. So how does this work? What's the magic behind this? What do I mean doing it? <laughs> Actually, there is no real magic behind it. <laughs> Look at that. That's good. I just look like Bosch. Oh, bib. 
I love this. So go on, exp explain the explain what touch bending is. Actually, in order to to be able to use it, you have to place all all your plants as uh, as uh, single game objects, and attach a collider and a little script to them, and then they can interact with any other collider which has the uh, player listener script on it, and then uh, on collision. Um, they sample the speed and direction, and uh, the plants will sample speed and direction from the object which touches them, and uh, will create the, uh, the script on the plant will create a rotation matrix and a little animation, uh, and that gets sent to the shader which does all the rest of the work. Um, the well, the tricky thing about it is uh, is to get the lighting right that it follows the uh, rotation and uh, yeah to make it work uh, with instancing, for example, and make it pretty cheap to render, even if all of these plants are single game objects. So, how many can I have in a scene then? I mean, what's what what's the most you've stress tested this beast at? Three thousand. Wow. I thought you were gonna say like five hundred or something. No, that's that's a killer. <laughs> that's a killer. But, um, recently, I'm wor uh, I've been working on a project, and they added three uh, three thousand uh, plants using touch bending to the sea. But okay. uh, uh, well. I would not recommend to use more than 50 or 60 instances, for example, unless you use pooling. Then you can have up to 200,000 of those touch bending things in your scene. As you wanted to talk about the forest, there we have 200,000 touch bending bushes and plants. Two. <laughs> That's a um, that's a fair few. Uh, what about using it with, with Vegetation Studio? Freshmere asks. Vegetation Studio has quickly become VS instead of Visual Studios. So um, advanced foliage shader with Vegetation Studio and this touch blending. Uh, actually, I haven't I haven't tried touch blending with it. So the the foliage shader, so the shader. Uh, which is used on the grass here or on the bananas, are uh, supports uh, a procedure, uh, no, indirect instancing um, as used by the vegetation studio, so you can use the shaders um, when laying out your ferns or maybe even grass. Um, something, but I haven't really tested touch bending. I uh, added support for the original uh, touch bending or grass collision as it comes with Vegetation uh, Studio, but um, I have to admit that it doesn't look nice and I do not really like it. Just because our vegetation studio simply does not give us the information to create a real touch animation. I oh, get no okay. direction, I get no speed, or it's more or less some kind of obstacle avoidance which is going on there. I get, okay, at this position there is a force, and this force is, is high or it's not. not that high, but that's all. I do not get the uh, direction, I do not get the history, where was it before, so do I have to sway back or, or anything. Um, <clears throat> I know that Vegetation Studio has an API which lets you uh, uh, <clears throat> sync to, to, to special uh, events like entering a certain 
collider and then it, uh, it frees the, uh, the instance rendered by uh, Vegetation Studio. So that's, that's the way it, uh, it supports uh, harvestables, I think. So you could uh, just, if you're far away, you could use uh, Vegetation Studio to, to render your stuff, your ferns, for instance, your 3,000 ferns. And then if you enter a trigger uh, around the plant and you ask it from Vegetation Studio, uh, pool or instantiate uh, while pulling would be faster, of course, um, a, a game object at the, at the position, the proper position, and then just do the, uh, the touch bending, and when it ends, uh, when it has ended, then you put it back to vegetation to school. Oh, that's and a nice solution. All trees are supported right out of the box. But, um, well, that package has more or less been deprecated. Oh, that's a shame. Um, Antonio Earth Shaping asks, any plan for rendering systems supporting CTI trees to in combination with advanced terrain, terrain grass rendering? Oh. Oh, well, there's a, two completely different things. So grass, you, you, are, you have hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, individual grass instances. And I hope you will never create a game with so many trees. So uh, that's the first point. Next point is that grass is rather small compared to trees. So you have a completely different uh, drawing distance. Um, actually, right now, I'm, I'm looking into uh, doing tree rendering using compute. Sorry, so, using, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Compute shaders, so uh, just uh, it's a little bit similar to, to uh, how the grass rendering uh, takes place. Just um, well, leave the CPU and push all the rendering stuff to the GPU, like culling and then drawing and. Are uh, doing the LOD and things like that. Oh, we we love things being pushed to the GPU. Um, San Cesar, thank you for the uh, the donation of a thousand dollars. It's hang on. There you go. Thank you, mate, for the um, for the pretend donations. I do appreciate them. They are. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's always nice to get to get a pretend donation coming in. It makes me feel good. Thank you, mate. Um, all right, so um, advanced foliage shader more demo scenes. We got oh, we got another question. If not, you ask is about supporting the LW um, SRP. Ah, oh, every question has to come down to these uh, render pipeline. So we got going on. Right. Yeah. Can well, everyone can everyone not feed the uh, the the no, do, donate trolls? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, lightweight um, SRP. Um, I guess I'll, I'll I will support it someday. Um, I just do not want to make the same mistake twice I did when I. Ported uh, the, the poly shaders for uh, Unity 5.0 because I jumped in at beta 8 or something and they went on to beta 25 or 21. And wow. each week there was a new beta, and uh, it took me three or four hours just to, to, to make it work again because things totally changed. So um, if I can get ar uh, around using shader graph, I, 
uh, it would be fantastic for me to, to not have to use Shader Graph, or at least uh, I need a version of Shader Graph where web allows custom nodes, and I, I'm not sure if it um, supports it already, because um, doing all the math that's going on there, uh, just plug in together some nodes, uh, it will drive me nuts, I guess. So it, it might uh, take some time uh, until it's out of preview or until it has reached a very stable uh, state. There's wetness on these, on these plants. Wetness, yes. On the plants and on the trees. See the darkened... Um, I can't really tell. Is there wetness on the bark? On the leaves? On the leaves and on the bark. And if you go down to the, to, to the roots, you see the roots are pretty dark because there are the... <gasps> I Ooh. thought water would accumulate there. There you go. Ooh, what do the green boxes say? You always have these random green boxes in your scenes. Mm. Vertex colors and UV4. Using vertex colors and UV4 allows you to separately separate primary from secondary bending and bake ambient occlusion to vertex color alpha. Oh my word! Look at these raindrops on these leaves. Oh, that's nice. Vertex colors. Using vertex colors allows you to separate primary from secondary bending and gives you full control compared to legacy bending. However, baked ambient occlusion is not supported. Oh, this is pretty. Yeah, this is limbo dancing. Why is he, why is he doing the limbo dance? Because uh, that's... Uh... Well, when I started uh, uh, to work on the animation, uh, well, I have to, to admit, it's all based on, on uh, um, Crytex tree bending, uh, which you also find in the tree creator shaders. So they have defined four parameters, and we just have four vertex colors. But I wanted to have uh, ambient occlusion as, as well. Um, so I had to merge to two parameters and the result is something like this, which is not very convincing, I guess, at least not in 2018. So you have two other modes there, which are... Yeah, this is nice. ...newer ones. Vertex colors only has a rather small footprint because it's just the vertex colors, but no ambient occlusion bait to the vertices. And if you <clears throat> want it all, then you would have to use vertex colors and uh, an additional UV channel <clears throat> to bake all the needed information for lighting and bending in this case. I mean, I don't see drastic difference between the two. You mean the ambient occlusion might be that it's a little bit too too low. Like performance wise, you know, you take a more of a hit, you know, you don't need to people aren't really gonna notice stuff at the end of the day. It looks amazing. Everyone says it looks amazing. It does look amazing. And but um fresh meat still still not convinced to buy. Fresh meat's <laughs> cheaper than I am. Alright, tree demo. Let's have a look at the tree demo to see if we can convince fresh meat with a tree demo. All right, let's click oh play. no it's a tech demo it looks <laughs> he goes, no, don't play my demos. You've got no. them in your kit, they get played. Don't play that demo. If you don't want people to play them, don't include them. Right, what, what are my green boxes, these over here? What are these green boxes all about? Simple trees. What's this? AFS simple tree shader. Manually modeled bananas added as trees to the terrain engine using AFS Simple Tree Shader. 
Bending is stored in the UV. Yeah, so they are rendered like a common tree created tree. So if you go away with a camera, you'll, you'll get the built in billboarding powered by AFS. So it should be, it should look way nicer. Hang on a minute, you're telling me that this is a billboard now? Already billboards, and it's just one rock hop. Because it's these are simple trees, and simple trees allow you to to have trees with just one single material. Hang on a minute. Now, what? This is now. They normally look shit when you go to a billboard. Yeah, that's that's one point of the AFS or shader package. It, um, improves the, the fading between mesh trees and billboards in case you use tree created trees or trees compatible with the tree created trees. Holy crap! I had no idea. Because, like, every time you look, the thing about Unity is that you go la 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 and you're walking around, uh, like, you know, a scene, like, you stick Gaia in and you generate a load of trees and you go, look at me, I'm over here, my trees look shit, but as I zoom in, snap, the trees now snap in and they look alright. And then you look at a load of games on Steam and it's the same thing, snap, your trees pop in and okay. I, I thought, oh, what the hell? But why isn't everyone just using this? This is on the, this is cheap. Why are people still using standard and that this isn't why did this never get purchased by unity this is another question i'm going to throw have you didn't unity come knocking on your door going what how the hell did you do this here's a bundle of cash it's ours now they now came man this is insane Well, actually, the speed you get from it, that sense, compared to, to speed trees, for example, if you don't own any third party solution like Vegetation Studio or all trees, then the old school tree creator terrain trees are super fast. I want to go into the wind demo because he's still not convinced. Fresh meat's getting movement. He's still not. He's still not convinced, Lars. He's still not convinced. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the wind demo. Do you want to describe the difference between what we're seeing on the left and on the right? Yeah, it showcases uh, the leaf turbulence feature, uh, and it's enabled on the left, and it's disabled on the right. And uh, on the left, you'll see the stronger the wind, the higher the frequency of the bending. While on the right, the frequency just stays the same. So it's a nice little feature, which took me a while to do. Where's, where's the bloody scene gone? Oh, it's the same. There it is, all over here. Okay. So what do we need to do? Hang on, here we go. All this stuff here is a little bit daunting to me. All these settings that you've got here on the right hand side. So just, while I've got while I've got you on. Oh look, you can see oh cool, you can see how it's working. That is awesome. Um give me a little explanation of all these different settings that you've got here. Let me just hide these ones so we don't we don't care about those. So we've got advanced foliage shader to tool that gets dragged onto this this um this model here. So we've got the original mesh, it's got here none, so you don't need to put anything in there? 
No, I, uh, I added it uh, afterwards. Uh, I think it's um, well in order to create um, the meshes for uh, you need for for the shader to bake in the uh, the bending information. You can either do it all manually in your 3D app by adding vertex colors or even editing the UVs, UV4, but uh, it's quite cumbersome. Um, so I wrote this little tool you see assigned to, to the banana right now, which is the, the foliage tool, which allows you to at least tweak the most important settings right within Unity. That is primary bending along, um, uh, along the height of the plant and uh, the secondary bending. Uh, it doesn't do anything in real time right, right now. Ah, okay. This tool is used to, to, bake, uh, um, to bake those settings uh, to, um, to the mesh. If I click this stop button, am I going to break it? I don't want to click it. And we've got adjust vertex colors. Take snapshot. Yeah. What's this all about? Yeah, once you've uh, once you've uh, baked the bending information to to the vertex colors, uh, you could just fine tune them using the curves there, uh, and then taking a snapshot. Uh, just means you make a copy of the current values, then you tweak something, and then you can restore them to, to the snapshot if you're not so confident with your results. Oh my god, I'm stealing this. I'm stealing your editor. I just noticed. Oh my, you got a helps thing? And then I click this and it takes me to the, to the website? Yeah, it should take you to, to the right uh, section. Actually. Yeah, it does. It takes me to the right section. No, but yeah. guys can't see it. There you go. It took me there. I'm stealing that. Oh, that. How, how do you guys learn all this stuff to, to edit the editor? To make your custom editor? Wait, do you got like, go to Unity School or something? What the hell? Yeah. I just tried to, to write an editor. Oh, I've tried, mate. Believe me, I've tried. I've failed miserably. Um, oh, so, wow. So with all these little things that you've got, these making your asset, having to make custom editors, um, what kind of, what are the common problems and issues that you've experienced making assets for Unity? Because we've got a lot of people who come in to chat and they want to get their fingers, you know, fingers dirty, their toes wet, to start um, making assets themselves. And it's always good to get some advice. So being that you've been going since 2011, you've made, you know, a thousand different things. What are the, the big issues, the common ones that you've experienced? Um, learning C sharp, I guess. <laughs> okay, no. put that as the prerequisite. I come from a similar and I have no idea about that object-oriented code thing and delegates and private virtual protected voids and things like that. Um, so uh, this is really, it's still quite difficult for me to, to, get, it, uh, to get it right and to get a good understanding. So now you see the... Uh, uh, the gizmos of the foliage tool. Oh yeah. So you see the uh, the bending box. You also see the uh, light probes right now, but those red are uh, rotated squares, for example, they show uh, your um, what gets baked to the to the to the red color, and uh, the green circle that's uh, Gets back to the green vertex color and this are uh, secondary bending. So you can, uh, for example, you won't, uh, you do not want to have secondary bending uh, bending on the stem of the plant because when you get that uh, limbo dancing, so you can uh, just 
if you click on the curve for secondary bending, uh, everyone can see this. The first keyframe, then you should and uh, no, push it to to the to the right, then you should get a second circle which shows, okay, there will won't be any bending on vertices within this inner circle. So the oh. step now should be uh, should be formed. Oh. But right now it's just going nuts there, as far as I can see. Oh, come on, Fresh Me. Use my. Um, I Fresh Me told me off earlier for not putting. Um, I made I made an exclamation mark forced, but I didn't make an exclamation mark um, advanced foliage shader. The reason I didn't is because this guy's made too many kits for me to make, um, like sh quick commands for all of them. Otherwise, my, um, my I'll have more quick commands than I can know what to do with. But yeah, there you go. There's a link directly to AFS on the asset store. And Sanyo's put in the code. See? There you go. Sanyo loves me. He's put my affiliate code at the end of that URL. Um, but I could have made... Yeah, you could have made them. But you didn't, though. Did you, Fresh Meat? Because we can't work out how to use OBS properly. Um, Mike, mask secondary bending along Y axis. Axes? Axis. And then I click... Do I need to click apply for it to be applied? Yeah. Or test. What does a test button do? Uh, I guess first you have to click apply oh. and test will just uh, enter play mode. So, how oh, cool. You've got yourself a little button that forces you into play mode. <laughs> Save mesh. Oh, what does that do? Well, that saves the final mesh. As a new or over what does it do? It creates a new what in the folder? Just click it. Too scared to click it. Oh, look at this. It's come up. People can't see it, but it's come up with a little pop-up telling me where I want to save it. Oh, nice. Oh, this is funky. There's always the, like, just click it. Just click it. Nothing bad's going to happen. You can't break anything. Nice. Um, oh, let's not open up the CTI trees demo. Don't show the demos. No, we got to see the demos. Oh, make it big. So what's this demo? Uh, well, it showcases the, the uh, trees from the first version of uh, the custom tree importer. Uh, originally, uh, originally, they only supported uh, the tree creative shaders. Um, so... The latest version comes with its own shader family, which does a lot more things than just the old school bending. It supports tessellation, multi bar texturing, um, advanced LED fading, and things like that. But uh, the first version of the custom tree importer just let you import trees created with Maya or Blender or whatsoever um, and make a tree creator uh, compatible tree out of them and uh, yeah of course you could use them along with the AFS tree creator shaders to get physically based shading uh, and nicer blending between mesh and data. Your trees, there's something wrong with your trees because this is Unity and I don't see any big gaps between the branches and the actual... No, they are, <laughs> they are made by Berlinovoi, by the way. And they all were made with Blender. So there are no gaps. There, there should. This is Unity. There should be massive gaps in this tree. It doesn't look natural. <laughs> how, do, how do I know this is made in Unity if there aren't massive gaps everywhere? It's a fake. <laughs> it's a flip book. Oh, Uber integration. Nice question. Yeah. Uber. Uber integration. Um, yes, I haven't tested it for, for quite a while, but uh, it used to uh, support Uber. Um, AFS come, comes with a, its own deferred uh, translucent lighting solution, so that's the reason 
why you had to uh, to assign the deferred lighting and deferred reflection shader. Um, but you can, with just the simple edit in the lighting function, you can make it uh, write out translucent lighting so it's, uh, it works with uh, the Uber deferred translucent lighting as well. Um, it does not support um, any other Uber feature like snow or um, triplanar uh, whatsoever. I've heard use use it when you uh, use the foliage shader and benefit from deferred lighting, even if you have to use the Uber deferred lighting shaders and cannot afford to apply the uh, AFS shaders. Well, we've just been we've just been host decoy. Thank you very much for the host decoy. Um, if anyone wants to watch a Twitch stream where um, you're not just sitting there watching people play games and be silly. You want to see something truly amazing? Then check out um, Decoy. Somebody give me a shout out for I am the I am like Decoy. Um, she's an amazing chef. She bakes. Oh, she always makes me hungry. So hungry. Um, so yeah, if you if you're hungry and you, Decoy is ever streaming and you're watching, you're just gonna raid the fridge after watching it. She just makes you even more hungry. Oh. Oh my word, I really need and one day I'm gonna try and track you down and eat some of your food because it just looks fantastic. Um okay, look at look at this. This is your LOD demo? Yes. Actually there's uh oh, they disappeared. It disappeared, yeah. It's some some range. LOD groups let you add models using the foliage shader to the terrain as trees. Yeah, so, so Unity thinks of them as just a speed tree and uh, supports the, uh, all LED features. I have no uh, billboards for those, so uh, the last LED level will just fade out to nothing. Hang on, it's fade out to nothingness. There you go. So th I'm just looking at your grass. It's just ridiculous. Everything just, everything just looks so pretty. I want to load up the forest in a minute. Oh, what's this down here? Okay, let's fade in. Oh, man. Fresh meat, how can you not have bought this already? You need a slap. Oh, this is lovely. The thing is, I feel like a, I feel like a tit because, as I say, I've owned this for about four years, and this is the first time I'm sitting there playing with it because I keep on telling myself I've got Uber as well, and I've never imported, I've never even downloaded Uber, and I, and I purchased it. <laughs> um, all right. So, what's the CTI for AFS demo? I thought we've already seen CTI for AFS in other demos. Is this something different? Manually tweaked model. This model has been set up by manually painting vertex colors and using the foliage tool, which in case of such a rather complex structure takes twi makes t um, might take a while. But this one, imported using CTI. This model has been broken up, tagged, and imported using custom tree importer scripts, which also takes some time, but gives you maximum control. Once the model has been broken up, it's rather easy to tweak. Yeah, and you can, I hope you can see the slightly difference in, in bending. So, uh, while the, the small tree on the left is more squashed, so some, some kind, especially the lower branch, are, it doesn't have its, its own movement. Um, the tree on the right is, yeah, shows up way more variety and bending and that's so you can absolutely 
or you can fully manually edit your meshes. You can uh, manually add some details on your meshes and use the foliage to write with the Unity to set them up properly, or you can uh, use the custom pre-importer to get uh, models set up for, uh, for the folding shaders properly. Now this is, these have been all the demo scenes for advanced foliage shader. And we finally yeah. convinced uh, Fresh Meat to stick them in his shopping cart. All right, should we go? Is there any more you want to show me in AFS before we pop over to ATG? Well, there's the overall uh, in O1 foliage shader overview. That's the. Oh, okay. Well, we, we saw the rainy version, and then there's a dry version also. Okay, what's the difference in the dry version? Well, it's dry. <laughs> it's well, there you go. So, lighting has to be baked. So it looks a bit too dark there, but uh, you can see in there you, you, you find all different shaders. So it contains the, the tree shaders and the billboard shaders. So if you look up that hill, most of these trees are already billboards, which are aligned to the camera and not simply standing upright like usual uh, Unity billboards. When, uh, when it comes to the pre-creator shaders, and they are fade pretty nicely. Hang on, which ones are the billboards? Uh, the one in, uh, the ones in the background. So I can't even tell. Right in the middle, you see one tree still receiving shadows, so it can't be a billboard. Yeah, I mean that's. The... But the trees behind this one are billboards. And they blend from physically based shading over to standard Lambert lighting on the billboards because they do, do not support any other lighting feature of not even Lambert lighting. It's no lighting because they are pre-lit. Um, um, I need, yes. I need to have done this. The again. grass there, uh, it's a simple grass shader, but it allows you to use translucent lighting on it. It's deferred, uh, unlike Unity's grass shader, which I do not understand at all <laughs> these days. Um, <clears throat> and you can uh, also put complex uh, models just on the terrain, so you find a lot of ferns and nettles there. Some of them are placed manually as game objects, but others are just uh, placed on the terrain engine and they are fully uh, normal maps uh, and support um, physically based shading as well. There's a manually placed uh, game engine. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, I need to get into advanced terrain grass because we still haven't touched onto the forest yet, and I've got a thousand questions to ask. All right, advanced terrain grass. What's the difference between advanced terrain grass and advanced foliage shader? Give me the, uh, give me in a nutshell. Oh, it's a rather big nutshell. Well, <laughs> it all started with the foliage shaders and uh, covering all different kinds of um, foliage. Um, Grass, smaller plants, ferns, banana trees, and those two creator shaders. And a lot of different uh, scripts and editors uh, are included for that. And uh, the advanced terrain grass actually only addresses grass and smaller plants, and it's, it's not really a shader, um, it's a rendering solution. Uh, I started to develop in order to get rid of, uh, of the uh, spikes on the CPU you usually get uh, when you deal with a lot of grass. What have I done wrong? I forgot to do one thing. Oh, come, come, don't make me read your read me's. 
fine, I'll read the read. No, you have, first of all, you have to, now you have to assign the uh, ATG shaders, uh, the lighting shader and the reflection shader, because uh, ATG is a superset of AFS. As it acts uh, a custom specular lighting for grass. I've stuck, I've stuck the the ATG internal deferred shading for the deferred. No, it's the oh sorry. Oh, oh yeah, 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 you're right. Sorry, yeah. my fault. I, I, I thought we were I all... jumped ahead, man. I'm <laughs> I'm always one step ahead. <laughs> so, okay. but. What? Um, oh, this one. What did I not do? I didn't do something. You you opened the wrong uh, demo. <laughs> oh, that that would help if I open the right demo. Yeah, it's the um, the full full demo. Oh no no no! Before I do that, I want to go straight into Win Demo. Okay. Because that this this just blew my mind. Uh, if anyone wants their mind blown, <laughs> yeah, let's guess go down here. Yeah, unlike AFS, uh, ATG uses a texture-driven wind, yeah, where are the plants? Where is it? Where is everyone? Uh, there's no plants. How did I break all your prefabs? What did I break? Here's the full demo. Yeah. Here's the wind demo. What did I break? I broke something. This isn't blowing my mind, I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hang on. It's fine. And then you go to wireframe, is there anything or are they just gone? What did I do? I did, I, I did something, I've broken something. Hmm. Should I re import it? I was playing about with this earlier, and I think I might have broken something. I guess we can simply skip that. You can hit play, then we can see the uh, the wind texture actually. And unlike uh, other uh, texture-based wind solutions, you're you're uh, you're able to to rotate the wind in real time without having any kind of uh, artifacts in the uh, bending animation. I'm going to re-import this because I broke it. Hang on. Delete. Oh, I can hear myself with your speakers. That's just freaking me out. Although I do have a sexy voice. No wonder everyone loves to listen to my streams. Can't blame you. What a lovely voice. I import custom package. Where did I stick it? Um, I stuck it somewhere. Pink! It's all pink! Pink is lovely. Pink is the color of the future. Alright, while I'm doing this, um, you, would, you were going to describe to us w um, why people should own both ATG and AFS. Oh, people do not have to, to own both. Uh, depends on what your what you're looking for, if you just looking for a um, quite fast uh, solution to render grass on standard Unity terrains and want to make it look nicer than it usually does, and you want to avoid those 20 millisecond spikes whenever the camera moves, then ATG is the package. I would advise to get, but in case you're um, looking, well, you're working with 
three creative trees because you have a huge library of those and uh, um, or just want to benefit from their uh, inherent speed, then um, AFS would be a pitch. If you're just looking for grass, then go with uh, ATG. Um, if you're interested in tree creative trees, also, or Australian and Polish, then AFS would be the package I would uh, recommend. Well, everyone, that's the first part of my interview with Forced, aka Lars. Just going to do some editing and upload the second part where we'll start playing about with the forest as well. And you can catch more of these videos on my live Twitch stream or the w.twitch.tv slash the nosy coder. And if you do like these YouTube videos, click on that big juicy red subscribe button down below. To all of your friends and neighbors, we're going to be back again very soon with another live dev interview. And we're going to have Unity reviews. And we're also going to be doing some more game dev. So remember, if you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell. That if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.